Hi there, Dave here. How are you? This bad boy is my docking station for large width sheets or large width slabs of timber. Anything up to two inches thick by 31 and a quarter inches wide, I can do it on this. 12 feet long, not a problem at all. Stick with me and I'll show you how. The trouble I was having with docking large width panels was I'd have to put them on my assembly table which traditionally was where I used to use the track saw all the time. You'd throw something up on there, sacrificial top, top on it, and I would get a rail out and cut it. And that was okay, but it was slow because if I was putting something together up there, like assembling, because it, uh, it's an assembly table, it slowed me down. Clear everything off, do the cut, put everything back up on there, work away, oh, I need another one cut, move everything off again. You get the picture. The advantage of this situation is um, because it'll cut up to 800 millimeters wide, there are other things that you can use to cut, to, to dock with. One of them is a sliding compound miter saw, but you'll find that they're restricted to just over 300 millimeters, 12 inches wide. And if I'm doing something like a door or uh, some cabinets for the kitchen, that's just not wide enough. I can't do it with that. The other option is to use a sled on a table saw. Well, there, that's great if the sheets are small enough, like in width, so that as I'm putting it over, they're not dropping off the side of the saw and falling on the floor, because I don't have the capacity of anything wider than around four feet on my table saw's sled. This guy here, as I say, up to 12 feet long, up to, up to 31 and a quarter inches wide, not a problem. I could have made it wider if I wanted to, but I realized I'm not that tall. And I, <laughs> I had to find a point there when I was pushing the track saw to the other side that I could still reach <laughs> because <laughs> my arm's not long enough to go further uh, unless I climbed up on top and was going for it. Well, that's, that's a different story. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of the unit as it was being assembled. Now, underneath, it's a simple cabinet. It's made just the same way as I make kitchen cabinets, except it's a lot bigger. It's two meters long by 800 wide. It has one brace panel right down the middle. Instead of putting a solid back in the back of a kitchen cabinet, this one goes down the middle as a spine, and then I've got ribs coming off, and these ribs are these guys. They're the partitions. And so everything is screwed back into that center brace and also into those ribs. Then there's shelves in between those again, and the shelf is pretty handy because I put the track saw in there when I finish a cut. Very easy. I'll show you, see? Do the cut, put it down there, it's out of the way, I can pick up the piece of timber or the panel and go with it. Uh, what else have we got on it? So that's the bottom. It's on casters, they're all lockable, and I can wheel it into the corner of the shop when I'm not using it. The top, the top is a torsion box. Now the top has got a few design features in it that I was really happy with. I spent a long time with this profile that Festool sell, and I bet you a lot of, bet a lot of you didn't realize you could buy this profile. It comes in two meter lengths, and they sell it as a pair. So you buy two two meter lengths, so four meters in length in total, and it is designed to take the MDF top that the MFT3 has. It's a lot of initials, isn't it? MFT3 is multi-function table. MDF is medium density fiber board. So that's what that is. MDF top, MFT3 profiles. You can buy them as a unit. Go and see your Festool stockist and they can get them for you. Now while you're there, you can also buy the supports for the track. These are spare parts for the MFT3, and stockists can sell these to you. The track I have is the 1080, which is the standard one for the MFT3. But if you've already bought a track saw and you've got a 1400 rail, because the 1400 rail or track is, they do a bargain with that. You buy the saw, you buy the track together, you buy the track for half price. So you can put a 1400 on here, not a problem at all. You don't have to have it hanging all the way out. You can have it hanging out the back if you wanted to. 
uh, you, you might be concerned it's going to hit the roof or something as you raise it up, slide it out the back a little. Great system. The fence is also off the MFT3 across the back. And the reason I've got that there is because I like it swing stop. Now you don't have to use that kind of a fence. You could make your own fence, I guess. And you could make your own swing stop out of a little bit of T-track and away you go. I use that because uh, I had it. <laughs> now you'll notice that I'm not clamped down. I'm screwed down to the top. After I'd screwed that track down to the top, I dropped this down and I got it dead on 90 degrees before I did my first cut. That first cut is a zero clearance cut. When I did that, I made sure that I tightened these guys up super tight. Now these are the stops for the track supports. So there's a stop on either side and you lock it in position. That's it. It's a no-brainer. You don't have to think about 90 degrees anymore. Slide this back to the stop, tighten up that support, and then it's just a matter. This is front and back, of course. And it's just a matter of dropping this down, locking it onto the rail, pushing it down onto the thickness of the material you're going to cut, raise it up. Perfect. That is so easy. This is a great system. Uh, what have we got next? Now, as I, I was saying earlier, I spent a lot of time with this profile. I had it set up on my table saw, because it's a nice big bench, and my RFE table. And I had all the different thicknesses of timber because I was working out how I was going to mount this and what the best structure for here was going to be because I, MFT3s are one slab of uh, MDF and they're a certain length. They're not monstrous. They're not you know, the so size of this. But you can get there by having three of them in a row, but it costs a few dollars, that's all. Set them all up on a bench and then I was going through the different thicknesses of the uh, product on top. Now if you want to use Festool's protractor with this system, you can. But you have to make sure that your top, your top here is 19 millimeters above the support on the profile. You have to replicate what they've done with their MFT. So it's either 18 or 19, probably three quarter inch. Now why do we do that? Because there's clamps that hold the fence in position if you're not going to screw it down and the protractor also, and they rely on pushing the clamp down hard, pushing the, the, uh, the, the fence down hard onto the surface. Now if the surface is down lower than the angle of that clamp, because the clamp just pivots basically, it says, all right, I'm pulling you down, it locks onto that little slot in the track at the back, pulls it down hard onto the surface here. If it's going to go past its, its centre point, like past level, and going down, it's going to pull the fence back out of the way and it's going to, so you won't be square anymore, it's going to be, a, it's going to end in tears. Uh, I use 16 mil of mine and I put a 3 mil packer all the way around on top of the torsion box and you can see pictures of that as well I think. Then the torsion box itself has one, two, three, four, five, six chambers and that sixth chamber, this one here, is a dust port. There's a four inch port underneath and that's locked in and my large system hooks up to that and just pulls dust out from underneath. And I also have my overhead system that pulls it out of the top of the saw as it's cutting. So it's pretty good. I, there's hardly anything gets away from it. Uh, what else have we got? So I've got the pictures of the frame there. You can see it all screwed together. Uh, I've got pictures of the torsion box. And the, the thing with the torsion box is that it is two skins separated by a framework in between, the sandwich. And because they're separated, if you push load on the middle of a torsion box, it's trying to stretch the skin on the bottom. And it just, there is no stretch in it. You'll tear it before you'll stretch it. So these things, horribly strong, unbelievably strong. It looks lovely. It's got a lot of potential for drawers and all that kind of stuff in there as well. And for storage for timber, and now I'm going to cut a piece of wood. Now you'll remember that I've got this trusty start for my dust extractor down the back there. That's so cool. Here's a piece of melamine that's around about 450 wide. 
Remember, it can go up to 800 millimeters wide, not a problem at all, 12 feet long. See, if I was to have that much of an offcut on an MFT3, it will have fallen on the ground. You only have around about five or six inches off the edge of an MFT3 before it's starting to drop. Big design feature. So I'll slide that along just to show you that it does work. My dust extractor is not too noisy, is it? Now this guy is hooked up to the shop vac. Drop that down. Put that on there. Make sure the leads on this little protector, which stops it catching on um, the end of the aluminium there. And let's give it a shot. Turn them all off. Now, the last thing we want to do is have a look at what kind of a cut we just got then. Now, this was cut with just the standard saw blade. Have a look at this. That's pretty cool. That's a lovely cut. And even the off cut. I'm even going to show you the off cut. And that's without the splinter guard set up on the off cut. That's still not a bad cut either. So there you go. That's my little system. It wheels around wherever I want it. It saves me mucking around with moving things all around the shop all the time and taking things off the table, putting them back. I aren't, I'm not in a situation where it's getting a bit risky with the table saw's sled for large panels. I've actually got the width where with this, where with my drop saw, I can only cut around about 200 mil with mine. With a sliding combination uh, saw, you're getting out to around a foot, 315 mil. Uh, not going to cut it for what I just did then. Those things, yeah, sometimes you can cheat and tip them over and go to the other side again and join the join up. I've done that before, join the cut up, but you never get as perfect a cut as I just got then. Tip from Dave. Make yourself one of these babies and life will look up for you. See you later.